Hello! In this video, we're going to show you how to assemble the Penny Pulp 2 trebuchet. You should have received a bag like this in your order. Open it up. Inside, you should find two additional bags filled with parts. The larger parts will be loose in the original bag. Then, I recommend getting two bowls and using them to store small parts. I'm gonna empty the metal parts into the small bowl now. Make sure there's nothing left inside the bag. Some of the parts are small. In particular, the washer is often stuck to the magnet. The magnet is a very important part for this model. The soft pieces, you can just leave in the bag. They're pretty easy to deal with. You'll notice that all the parts have a thin covering on them that looks charred. This is a material added before the laser cutting to like preserve the surface. We're gonna get rid of that on all these pieces. It's gonna be a little hard for me to do with gloves, but I'll give you an example of one here. You'll notice you can lift up one of the corners, and then from there you should be able to just pull it off. You can just throw this away, this is garbage. I recommend unsticking all the parts first, and then putting them in the bowl um, before moving on to further steps. This is much easier without gloves. or if you have long fingernails. Some of the pieces won't have the coating on it. Um, it's mainly the wood and dark plastic pieces. The rest of the pieces you can just put in the bowl right away. I'm going to cheat here because I'm wearing gloves. I'm gonna use this little picker thing to loosen the sticker. Some of them don't look like it's on there, but it is, just look carefully. It should be a little bit lighter. Even the soft parts have the surface on it, so be careful. If you leave it on, it'll uh, make the trebuchet misshapen later, because it adds a little bit of width to all the pieces. Look out for this guy too, this little washer is uh, important.
it. You should have also received two legs in your kit as well. These won't fit in the bag, but they should be in the package. We're gonna start by building the legs. So in your bowl of parts, you wanna grab all of these white plastic cylinders. These spacers are gonna be used to support the legs. We're also gonna open up the bag of fabric and rubber parts because we're going to use some of the o-rings to help fasten the legs together. And if you want you can throw put these in the in the bowl as well. We're mostly interested in the o-rings here. You'll notice that there's four different sizes of o-rings in here. Um, I'm going to just organize them here so you can make sure you get the right counts in your kit. But some are small, some are medium, some are large, and there's a couple XL ones in here too, each with a very specific use. There we go. So we're interested in the four medium-sized O-rings here. They're gonna be used in the construction of the legs. So first we're gonna find the two leg pieces and we're gonna put them together. And notice that there's a little notch on one side. You wanna match those up. That'll make sure you have the straightest legs possible. Along with that, you need to find the two large binding posts. And there are these really long aluminum rods here. They should have a screw inside of them. All right, so all we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with the rod, put a medium O-ring on it. We're gonna feed it through one side of the leg and put it down. And then we're gonna do that again with the second rod. Awesome. So then you're just gonna drop two of these plastic spacers on each side. And then again, making sure that the notches are lined up, we're gonna put that on the top here. And it should just fall into place. Great. So now while you hold this in place, you're gonna get ready to attach the um, fastener from the other side. I'm gonna put the O-rings down first. These make sure that the, the spacing is just perfect for the legs and that there's no wobbliness and that you don't have to worry about over tightening the screws as much. Just made it feel a little bit better. So we're gonna just gently screw this screw on, on both sides. Um, these are made of aluminum, so I recommend not, you know, going too hard with them because you could strip them. And just, just get them firm enough where you can stand it up right now. We can tighten all the pieces later. We want to just make sure we got the right kind of like alignment there. So these aren't on super tight, but you can kind of tell that this is straight. You know, it holds its form, and that's pretty good. This is going to be a pretty stable platform for the, the trebuchet. Next, um, we're going to add some of these large o-rings to the feet these are going to keep it sitting in place when it throws and it'll add a little distance to your shot otherwise it might slide around a little bit because the the surface of the the wood is slick especially on a smooth surface like a countertop so you notice i put these on there's a little notch that it falls into and then you should you'll be able to tell that it's on there right notice it doesn't really move anymore Great, so I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit, um, firm it, it'll make it feel even firmer. Um, yeah, it's got a lot, a lot of ways to go. You might have to hold the back in place while you screw it in, otherwise it'll just spin. But don't go too too crazy with the tightening, or you'll regret it later. Great, well that feels really sturdy. Cool, so we did the, the first piece of the build, just the legs here. All right, next we're gonna focus on the um, arm of the trebuchet. I'm just, and that's gonna include two major pieces. One is the actual arm, like the long piece 
that holds the, the projectiles in place, and the other is the, the weight basket, which is what's gonna hold all the, all the pennies together. And along with the arm, you'll need these other plastic pieces that kind of connect the arm and the weight basket together. So basically all the black pieces we're gonna want right now. And this rectangular piece is gonna hold the pennies in place and that's gonna go inside the, the weight basket. Great, now give me one moment while I get some pennies. Like the name suggests, you're gonna to need to supply some pennies to, to power this device. Um, I recommend just going to the bank and getting some pennies. Hopefully they give you some shiny ones, which looks a little nicer. Um, but you're gonna want about 16 pennies. There's four, eight, 12. Here, I got 16 pennies here. So I'll get rid of this. And this is approximately what's going to go in the, the weight basket. Some old pennies are a little bit thicker and you might have to add one or remove one, but generally you're just going to get enough so that it fits inside the, you know, the, the weight basket. So get all your pennies together, kind of like this in a row, and then you're going to put this weight basket rectangle on it. And that should basically fit in there. It's not going to be perfectly snug, but it should be decent. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make a sandwich of these wooden and plastic pieces with the plastic piece in the middle. And then you're gonna put that all together like this. And then once you have that, you're gonna slide this weight basket in through this gap. Sorry here. Yeah, you just gotta make sure all the layers are aligned. And then this should slot right in. And if you do a better job than I'm doing now, it should, pop in there like this. It's not gonna hold in there perfectly, but what you can do now is, once it's relatively lined up, lined and centered, you're gonna take these two extra large O-rings and you're gonna wrap them around, and that's gonna keep each of these pieces in place. Um, make sure you get both of them on there. It won't do you much good with one. There you go. So. You can kind of see this is going to hold its shape now. Um, and you can just spend a moment making sure it's centered, but more or less this, this piece is, is pretty much done here. So I'll push this off to the side. Next, we're going to look at the, uh, the arm here. Now the arm has a few pieces. Um, the most important being the trigger um, and firing pin. So this has a little thin protrusion at the top where the projectile is going to attach to, and it's going to sit in between these arm panels like this. Um, I just noticed this again, you need to use these little notches to make sure that they're lined up and this will make sure you get the straightest arm possible. Cool. I'm just holding these together with my fingers right now. Um, but the next step is, to add that little black washer that I mentioned before. This goes in here as well, and that'll keep this nice and flat and straight. So I'm just gonna place that down there. Um, and uh, drop this. Great. All right, now the next step is for us to attach these pieces together. And that's going to happen this way. Actually, I got this backwards. It's going to go this way. The important thing here is to notice that the flat part of this, not the, the notch piece, is going to fall on here. It's going to wrap this way when it's loaded. So you want to make sure it's in this orientation. Great. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this on top of here and this on top of here and roughly size that up. And the next thing we need to do here is um, attach the, pardon me, we're going to attach these together using the two smallest binding posts. So there's two binding posts in here that are smaller than all the rest. You're going to grab those and, and unpack them. Now this part's a little tricky, probably the, well, we'll make it a little easier on ourselves. Um, keep that on there, keep the washer on top, and then we're gonna use these two O-rings up here to fasten the, the, um, the pin in place. So I'm gonna squeeze these together with my thumb. It's roughly aligned, and then I'm gonna take this O-ring bring it over the top here and it's again it's going to go in those grooves and if I do that right these will this will sit in place now and I'm going to do that again just in the other slot perfect so I've got the pin on top and the washer in here and the next step is to attach it to the weight basket so again I'm going to pick this up, it mostly stays together. Um, actually, we'll start with this. We're gonna put this on here. We're gonna find our magnet. This little rectangle, and we're gonna place, drop it in into this hole back there. And it should just stick in there like that. That's perfect. Again, we're gonna look for the notches to match up on this, and we're gonna put this on here. And all we're doing right now is gonna just loosely keep this black covering piece in place, and I'm gonna use the medium-sized binding post for that. So from the back, I'm gonna pop that through, and I'm gonna tighten the screw on the other side. And you'll notice that uh, this binding post is a little bit wider than the other pieces, and that's um, intentional because this is a hinge and it's going to move. So these should move back and forth like that. Awesome. Um, you don't want to move this too much or the magnet might fall out, um, but it'll be firmly um, stuck in place once, once we attach the weight basket. So next, I'm just going to move the weight basket into place, line up the holes, and again, we're gonna use these uh, small binding posts to just pop through the back. They'll come through. You'll place one of the screws in. These ones should fit snug because they're a little bit smaller and you don't want the bottom to, to shake around at all. So I'm gonna snug it up. Great, and then I'm gonna do it again for the next one. This one should be easier because all the other pieces are in place. Just pop through, attach the screw. Super. So when you're done, what you should have is these two attached together. I'm gonna keep holding this together because there's still a washer in there that, um, needs to stay in place. And then this should freely move back and forth. All right, now next we're going to fasten the arm to the legs here. And to do that, we're gonna get this acrylic rod. Yours may be clear, I'm not sure what color it'll be yet, but you're gonna um, basically put it through the legs, put it through the center piece, and you'll see that this, you know, is the, you know, the, 
thing we're expecting to see here. I could ultimately do this when it's done. But this isn't um, staying in place, so we're gonna have to add these O-rings. So the first thing you're gonna do is, um, I guess you're gonna put this part way through. You're gonna place one O-ring on it. These ones are a little tricky because they're small, but you push with your finger, it should pop on there. You're gonna come through a little bit. You're gonna pull this through the arm just a little bit. And again, you're gonna add one more O-ring. I'm gonna pop that out of my finger here. It's a little easier without gloves. And um, then I'm gonna kind of gently push this through. I wanna be careful not to like break the legs here and squeeze them together too much. So just be careful about that. And basically you want to just slowly push it through and keep the arm basically in the center of the acrylic rod. And you're gonna just play with the O-rings so you kind of get it in the middle. Um, I'm getting kind of close here. And then um, what's actually interesting is you don't want these O-rings on too tight because you want this to swing freely. So just make sure it, it swings easily. And a good test is if you, if you pull it back and it swings back and forth a lot like this, that's a really good sign. It's like you got a good axle there. Um, and then lastly, we just need to keep the rod from moving back and forth as a whole now. Uh, again, we're just going to pop on some O-rings on the, the front and back here. And again, you don't want it too tight. That's fine if the rod moves around a little bit. It'll give you a, a larger, farther throw later. Oop. Again, much easier without gloves. But it can be done. Great. Super. Right, I'm gonna move this aside for a minute. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build the, the trigger string and some projectiles. So I'm just gonna, put, you should have three projectiles worth of fabric in here. We're just gonna build one together. And then you should have a string and you should have three of these metal nuts, but we're only gonna make one projectile here, so you just keep two back in there. Let's we'll start with the, the trigger string. We're gonna peel off the, the paper backing like the other parts. Um, definitely more important for this one, um, otherwise it's too rigid. You want it to be nice and um, you know, flexible. Cool, so I got that off. Um, put that down, and then we're gonna do the same for the um, projectile here. And the projectile should be a much thinner material because it's designed to be lighter. Um, trying my best here with the gloves. ditch the gloves here because this is much easier without them. There we go. Great. So that should come off. And if you have a little bit of a circle in the middle, you're going to get rid of that. Just pull it off. But you want holes in both ends. All right, we'll, we'll start with the projectile because it kind of teaches the, the concept you need to know. Basically, this is like held in place by a loop. So you're gonna kind of pinch this together and that is going to be fed through the, the nut. And again, when you get to the other side, you're gonna feed it back through the loop. Oops. So I'm through one loop. Now I gotta get through the other loop. So pinch it. And then push it through the loop. Okay, great, I got it. So when you're done, you should be able to like gently pull the nut down and you'll end up with something that looks like this. This will be your projectile. 
It's got a loop down there, and this is open up here. Great. So the next thing we need to do is create the trigger string. Because the penny pole has a magnetic trigger, we need this metal washer. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tie our, our string to this metal washer. I'm gonna just do a simple double knot here. I got a square knot. All right. Make sure it's tight. So it should be on there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our legs here and we're gonna use the same loop concept again. You wanna be behind the trebuchet here. So meaning this side, where when you fold it up like this, you have access to the magnet, which we put in there. And that's really important. Before we do that, we're going to um, pass the washer through this. Actually, that's not right at all. We're going to fold this up and we're going to push it through the washer. That's it. Great, so after you do that, you're gonna feed the big end through the little hole. All right, down, you should have something that looks like this. Where on one end of the washer, you have the string, and on the other end of the washer, you have the fabric. Now this is almost done. The next and final step is we're gonna attach the trigger string to the base of the trebuchet. And this is where we're gonna feed the string back through the fabric. So I'm gonna do that gently, pull the washer through, and then we're gonna let this get taut and try to keep it in the middle. It'll slide around a little bit, but if you get it in the middle, and you don't wanna pull on any of this stuff too hard, it's pretty durable, but you know, it's, it's just, you know, it doesn't need to be yanked on. Great, and Lastly, we're gonna arm and fling this. So we're gonna take the projectile that you just made. We're gonna come up to the top, place it over the pin, let it drop down. Now the cool thing about this is it should just kind of like naturally hang there. Like if I pull it forward like this, it should just lay there because the washer's flat. And then all you do is you flip over the, the weight basket. It should clamp in place on top of the projectile, you're going to lift up this metal washer, fix it to the magnet like that, and you could hear it snap. And then from there, all you do is pull this gently, and there we go. I lost my projectile already, but that's how you do it. Now, a couple quick trips, tips, excuse me, if you're having trouble, um, most important things to make this work well is that this hinge is very loose and good and it's not too tight. Sometimes you can over tighten the O-rings. You wanna look out for that. You wanna make sure all the pieces are in place. The, the angle of this um, trigger pin um, is very important. So make sure it's like nice and lined up in there. Um, you know, generally speaking, you wanna throw do this on a flat surface and you know, you'll um, just need to make sure that everything's lined up generally. If it, if it hangs in place and looks good and it's nice and symmetrical then you're probably in uh, a good place uh, but that's it